I don't want to be the next Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's not who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Chris Van Damme. Van Damme is our stage name. And we want to honor the legacy of how hard he worked for without having the ego or the fear of trying to be the next Van Damme. Hey guys, this is part three of the four-part Chris Van Dam interview. Make sure to watch the first two parts if you haven't seen him yet. I'll link in the description below. But in this one, we're going to get, of course, his very unique perspective and his experience with acting and uh, the auditioning process. Uh, going to talk about that cool Van Dam music video. His sister, Bianca, actually directed it. Some really cool behind-the-scenes stuff with that. And kind of what him and his siblings are up to and what they're really trying to pursue and he's got he's got a really good message in general that only a few people like himself can give about this pressure of being the son of you know a high profile celebrity so you're not going to win miss that anyway if you like this kind of content please help support the channel by hitting the like button subscribing and sharing the video i'm a daniel day lewis fan but uh, i'm going on an acting uh, <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis, man, he is He's my favorite. Actor. When you watch him, it's like you're not watching Daniel Day Lewis. You're watching literally the character, the character that he's playing. He's really, he's crazy, crazy, man. Yeah, you know, and that's something that I want to I want to kind of cover with you. Actually, the the whole acting thing, you know, is is people people believe that I want to be a leading man in films. They expect me to be the next. Yeah, it's man. almost like an expectation because your yeah, dad's who he is. So it's stamp. like you know. That's a big step. But but the bigger the stamp, the larger the larger the imprint and the larger the, the the faith. You know you can't repeat the truth, David. Nobody can repeat the truth. You can say something one way, the next take will never be the same. It'll be similar, but it'll never be the same. And that's a big philosophy my father told me as a kid. And he said, never forget that. I said, okay, I won't because it's true. You are your own self. You are your own entity. No matter how big I become you one day at some point will transpire some type of motivation to millions of people in some way, shape or form from the smallest thing to the largest thing, whether it's martial arts or not, you will do something that will inspire people. Maybe it's the way you speak. Maybe it's the way you handle yourself because of the way people assume things about you. You know, um, people expect so much out of me, man. They expect me to do the 360 kick, which I can do. It's fine. I, I've it's seen fun. your picture on uh, Instagram, your helicopter kick. I'm like, yes, yeah, that's, that's, there it's you go. It's okay. You can get the yeah. top done, but it's, it's, not, it's not what interests me. And, and if you're going to ask me, would you want to play the Prince Charming of this movie? I prefer to play the Boba Fett of the movie. It doesn't say awake a dialogue, not because I can't act, but because I know how to act in a certain way that will attract the audience members just even if i don't have a line or one line or two those are the type of characters i like it's the the sub co-lead and that character is more more known than luke skywalker and it's you know in, in star wars speaking as an analogy yeah, sure. but it's i just i like those characters because there's mystery behind them and you want to know more about them you know mm -hmm. and and it takes a good actor and i'm not saying i'm good i'm saying i'm good enough it takes a good actor to portray someone with mystery than to be someone who comes in on the white horse with the shining armor and save the day, you know. I'm 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 not Chris Pratt or uh, what's his name. Uh, he's very good. He's very good. Chan Channing Tatum is a very good. But I'm not those leading men actors, mm -hmm. and not because of my charisma or any of that. That's just opinions, of people. Oh yeah, it's, sub it's subjective, man. That's why even like, real quick, I told Sheldon. J just as a joke, by the way, Sheldon, you almost kind of sound like Menachem Golan when he was saying. The way you described Christopher, the way he described Van Damme, no, he's not a star like Michael right. Dudikoff and and Chuck <laughs> Norris. When right, right. Van Damme, so you almost like the modern day Menachem. No, nah, he's not a star. You're Look what Menachem thought about Van Damme. That's how you're talking about Chris. You know, yeah. and it's okay. Sheldon has his opinion, and he's got his way of looking at films, and it's totally cool. I highly respect that. You know, it's no problem for me. It's more who fits better for the role. And, and a, good, a good example is, and I can't tell you too much about it, but in this 15-year-old project, we casted actors, and their readings were not the best. They were actors better than them, by far, 60%, 70% better. But we casted them because we knew as filmmakers, we can get them, and my father knew as, as, as director of the film, that he can get them in their, in their zone and, and make them a better actor through his directing skills. And that takes a filmmaker's passion to do. And that's something I believe in. You can say anybody can act. Anybody can. Mm -hmm. It just depends on how they're how they're led. I've seen people transformed by great directors, um, and some directors like to work with 
actors who are very good because it eases the the time, especially from constricted budget and all that. You know, you got to make it good. So there there is a fine line, but opinions are opinions, and they're they're what make the world go around. Mm-hmm. You know? So um, I'm I'm if I had to choose between in front of behind camera, I'd say both. It just depends on the role, you know. And if I get offered a a, a role that's uh, that's worthy enough to for me to play, great. And vice versa, you know, if if they think I'm worthy enough to play the role. Fine. That's 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 totally fine. And doable. I, I'll, I'll jump on it right away. And I'm getting done. What about genre? Obviously, people would assume action or martial arts. Do you have a preference though? Like, would you? Are you more like, oh, I want to be in more drama, dramatic stuff, or, or comedy? Yeah, like, who knows? Would like, say, what's your preference? Sure, of course, David. I would. I would say. I would say that uh, I would choose, you know, dramas and thrillers and sci-fi's over action, but. Oh, cool. I'm not saying no to, to an action film, especially if it's well written. You know, there's mm-hmm. great action movies that are well written out there, good actors. Like, uh, um, I think it was with Tom Hardy. Was it Tom Hardy? Uh, where the two brothers fight each other? Oh, Warrior. Warrior. You know, that's a great Love that movie. movie. Great action movie. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is. It bombs, but it's an amazing that, film. It didn't get any money for whatever bombs. weird reason, but it's an amazing yeah. film. Love that movie. That's the politics of. You know, you can't trust Rotten Tomatoes as far as you can throw it at the local peasant. It's, it's, um, but I would, uh, I would probably choose. I love sci-fi, man. A good, a well-written sci-fi, not uh, <laughs> Luc Besson's giant epic Jupiter ascending, whatever they're called, sci-fi's. I mean, a really well, well-constructed Fifth Element Luc Besson sci-fi. You know, okay. Um, or or uh, a good, a good psychological thriller. There was uh, a lot, there's a lot of good stuff on Netflix. And some of the stuff my brother and I are writing are very dark. They're very, uh, not, not gruesome dark. They're, they're just real dark. And they're, um, and what I mean by real is raw and gritty. And they're just, they're, they're, they get inside your head and they, ch- they kind of shake you up. And the movie is done, you feel good, but you're also shooken up by it because it was so relatable in so many ways. And I think as an actor, it's important to be as relatable as you can. Centuries ago, lied a man like me in a cavern above a pit, a great big pit. Interesting. Yeah. Let me ask you something real quick about your brother. So, sure. is is he in, interested in like acting and directing too, or just oh yeah. Yeah, yeah? So he wants to do the whole gamut to like everything that you want to do in the film world yeah yeah so he my brother is uh is very versatile like myself and he's completely the polar opposite of me blonde hair blue eyes you know and yeah. uh it's cool to uh it's cool to have that dichotomy as as two directors we 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 market ourselves as the damn bros like super mario bros but yeah i seen you then you guys put out some youtube videos i, I see yeah, you guys during, yeah. during, during the first covid way we made some really prof- as we i think our slogan was professionally bored um because we, we were just and, and it's just crap quality you know it's just a, it's just a mess with people out there for fun you know why you guys having fun yeah, yeah it's just, and we were in lockdown stupid you gotta do something so, with your time lockdown man yeah so you know let's that's make why i started my good. youtube channel in a way yeah, yeah actually a little before the lockdown but really got more into it you know with the lockdown that's good that's good though david and it's gonna only get bigger for you and better for you, you know man and keep at with it. guys like you on here it will well <laughs> you know? you'll get better you'll get more successful guys than me but i i think that you know, as real, I'm, I'm as real as it can get. I think I like to put things on the table. So if it helps to be more honest and real and get more, you know, viewers for the channel, I mean, that's what people want. They don't want the lie and the, uh, the, the no, the you, you can watch the mainstream news for the head. You know, we got YouTube trying <laughs> to get the truth and honesty and sincerity and authenticity. Yeah. here. Yeah, know? of course, of course. But if I say, you know, if I say something really bad about someone in some context, all of a sudden it's more successful. But when you talk about the boring nitty gritty to us, we we appreciate that. But mm-hmm. to some people, they want they want the uh, what sells, and sometimes what sells isn't is 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 not as you know it's 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 hot, but it's not as it won't get you far. It'll get you just it's like a toxic relationship, you know, it'll just last x amount of months. Yeah, like there's a reason why they put certain stories on the news and why they want to divide the country and all get people right. against each other and just all riled up, you know, because people tune right. in. It's 
You're right. Uh, it's you're right. yeah, right. it's a bad thing, but they're doing it because it makes some money and gets a meal. Oh, a lot, man, and, and our movies too. Movies now. I mean, have you seen Boba Fett? Are you Star Star Wars fan? It's and I say this with all due respect to Disney, but I think they could have done better. Mm, I have not. I'm not the oh. biggest Star Wars fan. The character's awesome, but I have not not seen it. Yeah, they they took the character and made him sixty or seventy percent less awesome with the way. Really? Wow. It's just so plastic, you know. And mm. and Lauren was way better, and um, it was it, music was great. Ludwig van Gorris is a great uh, composer, but anyway, just the politics behind it kind of pisses me off. It gets me riled up. That's when my brother and I are very um, our YouTube stuff is crap, and we know it, but we honor it because we got no budget to play with, you know. But if you give us budget. We'll make something really great, and 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 it's shows in our in our in our scripts. We've given it so many producers, and I think out of five producers, three have agreed to to work with us, and so that says a lot. And so we didn't we didn't know, like you know, as kids, we would hang out together, and yeah, he wants to going back to your question. Nick wants to be in the film industry as much as I do. He wants to bring good quality because he knows, as a professional gamer and as someone who, who understands that what is good and what is cheap, mm-hmm. he knows the difference instinctually, like myself because we were raised and seasoned in it, but we had that that hypersensitivity to be aware of those things. We have a good radar. Working together can only bring great quality stuff. And my sister is the same. She has a very uh, dark tonal stuff to her to her work, both acting, directing. She's a great director. She's fantastic. Um, she but, directed uh, that music video your dad was in, right? Yeah, yeah. I was camera I was camera operator on that. My sister directed it. And my brother, I don't, I don't think my brother was involved in that one. Aaron decided to edit the, the music video themselves, or maybe they had someone do it for them. I don't know. But uh, Bianca had a great edit. And it was, we had this beautiful entrance, one shot. We had this, I did the steady cam work around the Mustang and all that. It came out. And we had, it was a full one shot. And then we had, we had these jump cuts on the beat of the music which was fantastic, but, um, and she worked hard. She planned that. Remember she planned it for like a month, two months. And then uh, she had some friends help out. And I helped out. Uh, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was fun to shoot. It was really cool. It was like actually one of the most fun we had on a, on a set. Total guerrilla unit. It was, they, the, the, the crew and cast were my, what was my father was the only cast member, the Mustang, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, my sister was directing. You had me as a cam. And then we had, my friend Scotty, who's a good friend of my sister, who had BCAM and EPK at the same time. Uh, and then we had our, our DOP and our, our camera guy, our technician. And my ex, ex-girlfriend ex was uh, a good friend of my sister. That's how I met her. And she, you know, we're good and all that. But she came on through the wardrobe and kind of help on set. And it was really fun. It was like a little family again, you know. And we had, I think, I think it was a five-day shoot or four-day shoot. But we had so much fun. Every night we'd come upstairs here, we'd gather together, we'd, we'd charge up with cameras and have some have some whiskey, relax, you know, at night, play some video games, and then go to bed and wake up at 6 a.m. and then go to location on, you know, set everything up. It was really cool. Really cool. That location, though, it wasn't, like, blocked off or anything, right? Somebody could have just, like, stumbled over there and said, hey, there's Van Damme dancing in front of a yeah. Mustang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what was going on? It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a parking lot for a Greyhound bus stop. What it was, I think. But it had it had such a cool look on the on the lens. We used the 0.5 lens on the iPhone. Very very straightforward. We had a really cool um, uh, little mini Steadicam. I think the company we used TJ something from I think a Chinese company. But anyway, it was it was really 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 fun, and uh, we got a lot of good material, but wasn't used. Like the sun flares, everything hit the camera. Yeah, yeah. interesting. So uh, going by what you said, it sounds like your sister has a passion for wanting to be involved in in the film world too either as director i, I don't know about acting or yeah. no no yeah acting all too us. or all of us yeah all of us we are um we are uh, all involved in front and behind the camera we all want to do something with film and the reason why again i, I stress this is the reason why you don't hear about us too much is because um we do auditions we, we go out there we, we get out there but the auditioning world is, is is what people don't understand is it's it's layered like the shelf behind you you have the top tier mm-hmm. you have the middle tier and you have the lower tier the lower tier are for people hoping they're going to get the role the middle yes, tier I, are- I i was probably beyond the lower tier back in the day you know going uh, on audition. me too me too man and, and it's it, we all start somewhere it's not my dad too you know we all mm-hmm. start at some tier the middle tier are the the b selection and the a tier are the people that's hope to get to raise the finance film mm-hmm. and if they get yeah. one a star they usually want to get two or three to co-star mm-hmm. and then the, the the lower tier who are going in for six seven eight ten auditions reading pages of the dialogue 
and doing this and you know hoping to hoping to get that one break are immediately and even if they're great actors they're just thrown out because it's it's a business and it, that's why you see like guys like Shia LaBeouf popping up once every twenty years <clears throat> you know yeah. and they start on Disney Channel because that's where they 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 pump them out really fast and you better be good when you're going for a Disney Channel audition but I've done. God, man, I've lost count of how many auditions I've done and how many auditions I've walked out of. I've been, I've been in auditions where the casting director asked me to sleep with them. Like I've been on, God, I think I, I lost count how many of those I got. You Wait, know? the casting director solicited you, basically? Yeah, it happened so much. In yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I don't doubt it. That's sad. To, no, it's, it's so it's weird not- though, because it's like again, you're, I mean, you're, you're a little different because of who you're your dad is you would think a casting director would like maybe leave you alone as far as like that stuff, but maybe not so much like an unknown guy, you know, we're all different. And, and these people, they have their agendas and I have my agenda and that's not my agenda. You know, I once yeah, had, yeah, of course that's not. not the way you want to get in, man. Yeah, no, no, not at all. I once had an 18 year old girl. I think she was 18 or 19. She was, she was the casting director of the day. And she was, she I, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a page and a half of dialogue. And it was for a movie called, oh my God, Deconstruction Red. That's what it was, Deconstruction Red. It was a low budget. I think they were trying to get the guy from Titanic, Billy Zane, in it. And it was her and a couple of the people in the, in the room, and they were older and much more, they had great notes. Those people had great notes. But, but she would interrupt me in the middle of my, of my, of my fucking one page and a half dialogue. In the middle of it. When, and I, was, I, was, I remembered everything. I was in the room. I did two or three versions for them and on the second or third version and third version she interrupted me and she told me i'm, I'm so sorry like it was a, a minute speech of, of saying sorry and then it was a minute speech of how my eyebrows are too thick for the character <laughs> and i'm like okay can you start over and then i'm starting over and oh, oh we have to cut it so sorry we're gonna are you are you kidding me this is the <laughs> these are the people that are running our casting departments another not not all of them, but you got girls like Nina Gold and Rhonda Cress who are top tier eight, you know, A list casting casting directors who are good. Um, but then you have uh, I've I've had one where I was sent a terrible agent that I had back in the day. I had one where I was sent to a, an audition that was already shooting. Hmm. And I arrive at the office and I knock on the door. I take out my motorcycle helmet and everything. I arrive at the door and the girl opens the door and she goes, "Hello." I questionable. I said, "Hello, I'm here for the role of da 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 in Teen Wolf." It was for Teen Wolf. And uh, and she goes, oh, oh, you poor thing. She said, you poor thing. They, they're shooting right now as we speak. I'm like, they're shooting? <laughs> you know, the time frame between casting and shooting the project is like, could be four months, three months, six months, depending the, 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 the mass of the show, like how big the show is. And yeah, oh, I'm so sorry. They must have given you the wrong script. I, I walked away from that agency that day. And uh, I think after that day, I said, you know, screw this. I'm not doing this anymore. And I gave up. It's got to be frustrating, man. It's yeah, I gave up. Frustrating. If people think it's easy, you know, like, oh, put the son up in, in something, you know, oh, put the, the daughter up in something. Mm-hmm. Um, they're good enough, you know. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes the one phone call works. And did our father, you know, again, going on this subject that, you know, AJ spoke about, did our father push for us? Absolutely. But, you know, during the, during the divorce, there, there, are, there are things he's going through as a human being that makes him think about himself. And there are times when he's thinking about other people or other things he's going through. And his only priority was not to just extend what his kids went through, like what Bruce Lee did with his kids. There are so much stories we don't know about. The Lee family yeah. that went through with his father. You know, the, the, the shadow Brandon Lee had on his back it was huge. Mm-hmm. And yes, Brandon Lee was becoming a star. He was doing all these low budgets, trying to get up higher and higher. He would have been. He really would have been. But he wanted to do that. I don't want to be the next Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's not who I am. I'm I'm Chris Van Dam, stage name Van Dam, proudly represent, which is not our actual last name. It's Van Varenberg. Van Dam came from a friend of his in Belgium. Let, let me ask you this real quick, Chris, because for like a while you were going, I think, at least if IMDb's real, you know, I'm sure there's some factual stuff on there. You yeah. were going by Chris Van Varenberg. Yeah, there was a moment. Is it, did you just, was that a stage in your life where you just kind of wanted to try to disassociate more to yeah. be okay. your own guy? And then. Yeah, yeah sure. And I've, and I've, and I've dropped the insecurity of, of, of needing to do that, needing to try mm-hmm. to. Okay. That's the next sure. question. It says why you went back sure. to the van. Sure. There, was okay. big, you know, there was a big, like, you know, I don't need to represent this name. It's not mine. It's not even our family name. I want to go back to Van Varenberg. And my father sat me down with my grandfather. His dad and said, look, 
it's like a trampoline with with less weights you just take off the weights you'll you'll jump higher take off the weights jump higher jump with us okay so i kept then them so did my sister and my brother and you know for certain scripts and documentation we use van Varenberg, but van dam is our stage name and we want to honor the legacy of how hard he worked for without having the ego or the fear of trying to be the next man. Mm. You can be Schwarzenegger and be a gardener and still carry the legacy. Mm. You don't need to be, you know, Mr. Marcel on stage. You can be, you can carry the name proudly and do something else. It's, it's no problem. There are a lot of celebrities out there where their kids are doing, like I think Harrison Ford's son's a famous chef. Oh, and that's, and that's, that's great. And he's like top. And he, he loves his craft. And that's awesome. You know, I, uh, Sage Stallone was another, I, I met Sage twice in my life. I, once very brief, and once I met him at the Viper Room in Los Angeles, uh, outside the Viper Room in LA. That's, my, that's when I was, I had, a, I had a dark period in my life, you know, where I went through some drinking. I never did drugs, never once. Okay. Never touched a line of coke, never did it. I, I smoked one thing a week once. I tried it, you know, we all do, and uh, didn't like it. Wasn't for me. Tried one edible, freaked out for two fucking days, and then <laughs> went back down. But there was a moment where I was drinking a little too much. It was in my uh, early 20s, mm-hmm. early to mid 20s. And I just said, you know, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ride my motorcycle, have fun, and, and drink and fuck this world. That was when I stopped the uh, ambition. And I said, screw it up. You know? and, and, I, and I caught myself one night. I almost had a bad accident on my bike. One, one night, I stopped. I didn't stop riding, but I stopped drinking heavily. And I, I cut it out. I cut everything out. I drink maybe once in a while, maybe on a weekend. I'll have a few beers with my friends, Mm -hmm. maybe a glass of whiskey. That's it. That's Mm -hmm. nothing more. I won't do anything else. Um, And that's become really important to me because that is not who I wanted to be. I didn't want to be what my father went through in the 90s. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. I wasn't going to go and repeat that. And my dad doesn't want that for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And so my brother, my sister, and I, we all stress on ourselves. We've been through ups and downs. We've all been. We all do. It's perfectly normal. You know, you can put us on TMZ and call us losers, but we'll still come back and fighting. We're, we're Van Van Rooms. That's what we do. Um, but, um, but we represent the Van Dam name proudly because we found, we went through our arcs like my dad did, found our comfort zone, and now we're aiming on that and we're doing our best to get movies like Three Coyotes off the ground, which I'm not supposed to say too much of as well because that's in the near future, fingers crossed. Um, that's cool i was going to ask you about that because i do see that poster on on the yeah, yeah. rodent presented, entertainment yeah. website yeah yeah we presented it again in 2018 in fact jamie the guy who reached out to you uh did the poster work for that he oh said, really that's great work hey, he's really good that's yeah cool. he's very talented he does stuff for arnie and stallone did stuff for my dad in the past too and he nice. edited all our skits on Danbro. okay okay so he's, cool he's man very very close friend and uh, he's very talented he's also a fellow motor rider too it's pretty cool and your brother is here he's my neighbor apparently so. Yeah, dude, let me, I'm going to, um, I, I'm going to give him your number if you don't mind. Like I mentioned, oh, have him text. Cause it's like, sure. you guys, I mean, you're such a cool guy, a sincere guy I could tell. And he's like a, a really great guy. You know, he's like my best friend. It sounds like you and your brother oh, are like really close too, which is great. Good. But you, you guys just have too much in common. It's like, you guys both love martial arts, weightlifting, motorcycles, you know, just, That's just awesome, straight up man. nice dudes, man. Yeah, we live in the same town. Yeah, you're, you're neighbors too. That you know. <laughs> when I saw your number, I saw I saw the area code. I was like, oh my, that's my neighborhood. It's, 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 and me too. I carry the same you know digits. We represent the eight hundred five. Yeah, it, no, it is funny, man. <laughs> it is but, small uh, world, man. But. Small world, man. But uh, in a nutshell, you know, um, to to the audiences out there, you know, give 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 daughters and sons of celebrities a chance. Um, to represent themselves, to present themselves, give them a chance to breathe, give them a chance to be human, let them do their ups and downs. If they don't learn in 30 years, it's not your problem. Don't assume, don't judge, just, you know, we're as human as you are. We all take a shit in the morning. We all, we all stink inside. It's, it's, and we, we're all, we're all good people. We all know how to love, you know, it's not, it's not rocket science guys, you know, so just, it is what it is. Yes. Some people are born, after a huge legacy you know and they have to they have big shoes to fill okay in some way but if those people are confident with themselves don't take your fanship and your love for the person you idolize and put all the weight on their kids because they're as different of a person from their parents than you are from yours Mm -hmm. you know everybody has their own experiences and yes some people want to follow their in their parents footsteps and that's cool more power to them if that's what they want to do more power to them you know, it, it, it comes all from different experiences. I've had a past as a kid in the 90s, and it wasn't easy sometimes. 
And uh, sometimes it was. And sometimes it was confusing. Sometimes it was dark. Have I had fights with my dad? Of course I had fights with my dad. We all do. Sure. We all argue with our parents. Mm -hmm. And we butt heads on, on artistic uh, choices or personal life. Absolutely. All the time. Mm -hmm. But do we love each other? You, you, you fucking bet we do. <laughs> you know? We'll take a bullet for each other. Um, uh, so, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, you have to be good with yourself, man. And if you're good with yourself, everything else is easier. Everything else is easier. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no secret. It's, it just all comes back down to yourself. I like to, I like to say one more thing. I like to say that whenever I have a problem, I like to look, I like to look at the problem from a, 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 an, an atmospheric point of view. Because really, when you're looking at Earth from, from out here, opposed to from inside your apartment or wherever you are right now, it's a whole different opinion. Mm. It's like looking at a movie finished, opposed to looking at it being made on set. All the details that go into it. When you look at the problem from, from far away, and then you see another planet, another world, all their moons. What really is the fucking problem? You know, like what, what really is the, con the greatness of the context of this issue you're creating? You know, you know people who go to space come to that like... <laughs> realization I bet. you know like because it's they just have like a transformative experience looking at earth not a globe with countries and lines and all that but just like a it's new, all one thing yeah. and in the grand scheme of things like you're whatever you're dealing with is it really that big of a deal <laughs> like on you know but you know the reason why they make it a big deal that it's a good reason why they make it a big deal they love what my father presented to the world so they're they're passionately attached to that Mm. And they want to, they want to see what, what his offspring can do. It's a beautiful reason. But what you have to understand is that we're all human. And we're all different in some way. I want to ask you something about your mom. Cause obviously everybody talks about your dad because well, obviously, you know, he's Van Damme. Your mom is amazing. And, and people may not necessarily know this, but. But you'll have to wait till the next video where we discuss Chris's mom, Gladys Portuguese and some other interesting stuff. You won't want to miss that.